Welcome to the Chapter 4 Reports and Documents Overview. Now one of the things about this e-marketing text is that when I was writing it, I thought I'm going to tell people to go off and create plans and create all these different documents. So I might as well give you some templates and give you some structure and give you some frameworks to work with. So when you make these decisions, you can then go and document your decisions so you know what you've done, why you've done, and in 10, 20, 30 weeks time when you come back to do your metrics, you've got evidence, notes, and support so you can figure out why what took place was either the right thing or didn't map according to schedule. So let's briefly talk through some of the questions and answers that you can build up as your evidence base. Now the thing is, with these particular components, is that they're not necessarily going to lead you directly into an essay. You're not necessarily going to answer a set of questions around the marketing infrastructure as your essay question. So something like the plan. When you go and say, well, what do you want to do? A plan basically is going to require you, if you're using the Charter Institute of Marketing, you want to have identify, satisfy, and anticipate as your operational behaviors. So here, for identify, what do you want to achieve? Why does it matter? What, why is that important to you? What are the challenges that you're going to have to address? And what opportunities exist to make it easier to achieve what you want to achieve? For anticipate, then you want to start thinking in terms of, well, who am I addressing? Who's my audience? Why is what you're doing valuable to the audience? Where else are we going to find the audience other than buying from me? Who are your direct competitors? Who are your potential allies? Who's going to work for you? Who's going to work against you? Again, anticipate, satisfy. What do you need to do to make the content the audience wants? How? Using SIVA or 4Ps, does that content address what the audience is looking for? What are your resources? What have you got that lets you do and lets you create and lets you build those products and those solutions? What do you need to get? Now, this is a critical one for an e-marketer is that you could go, I have a camera, therefore I can go to Instagram. But what you might be seeing there going is, I have a camera, I'm going to need to take photos of things, therefore I'm going to need a content schedule, I will need to acquire those photographs, I will need to go to the places to acquire things to photograph. What's your finance, how much money have you got to spend on this, and what's your time budget? For most students the time budget is probably the critical factor of you can't do a hundred hours of internet activities to create your Instagram presence in the last 72 hours before the assignment's due. So you need to budget and budget recurring time expenditure, not just one-offs. So let's talk about one of your other plans here. You're on the internet, you're going to need to talk to people, you're going to need to communicate. So we've got a content pitch plan. And that is five different ways you're most likely to have to explain your site as a Twitter post, as a bio sentence on a Twitter account, particularly if you're using Twitter, but also if you're going to use Twitter as your secondary, if you're going to use it as your distribution channel or your promotion channel, how do you explain your primary site in the space you've got in the Twitter bio? What we call the elevator pitch, which is basically when someone says, so what do you do? And you can tell them what it is, and if you're good, why they care about it. Then you've got the bio pictures, which is the about you or the biography sections. And then you've got the about us page. So basically you've got five different ways to describe yourself. Each time what you're looking for is how does this information tell an audience who you care about something important about you that they should care about. On your communications framework, you also have the search engine optimization plan. 
Search engine optimization is one of those dark arts where everybody's a ninja, wizard, guru, panda, whatever. But the reality is that Google indexes the internet and Google is the primary choice for people wanting to find a thing on the site. They don't know who you are and they're looking for you. How will they find you? What are you offering and how are you getting that offer into the marketplace? And how do you get found on Google as it stands? We also, of course, in the communications framework have the classic uh, communications plan that is everything. Uh, online advertising is a big one. I think it's, you should be looking into, particularly Google AdWords. But also there's a lot to be said for the offline advertising. They find us on Facebook, the little Tumblr logo on the side of a door going to a cafe saying basically this is photo friendly food. Online advertising, offline advertising, conventional PR, unconventional PR, all the game plans you intend to do to communicate to the outside world. This is the big one. This is your, this is where you have a game plan of using social media. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Quick, Vimo, YouTube, whatever your game plan platform, whatever you plan on doing, this social media plan is about you sitting down and thinking, what active steps can I take with this platform to achieve an outcome? And if that outcome is make me more popular, talk to more people, promote my product, sell a movie, sell a bear, whatever it is. The comms plan is about you having a strategic thought when you go over, sit at the keyboard and engage on the social media platform. Technical communication issues plan, uh, part of the plan, branding, URL, all things like the email addresses, the contact points, can is the site's address something that can be easily understood? If you put your brand together, do you end up with some awkward phrasings? How does it work? What are the common words that appear inside the URL that could get mis... Does the brand appear in the URL? Can you put the product benefit in there? How are you selling the benefit of your online presence through some of your technical communications issues? Even down to little things like your email address. And uh, the critical one at the end, who knows the passwords and should they? Because if they shouldn't, change them. Last up, technical infrastructure plan. Last things you want to be thinking about is what, how? How are we going to get out there onto the internet? Now, in a standard semester of e-marketing, you'll be assigned platforms to work with. But what you also want to be thinking down the track is, well, what do I want to be using? A content management system, a blog, a virtual world, what skills do I need to maintain and operate this platform? If you don't have those skills, can you get them or can you outsource them? And last critical element here, and this is one of the, this is one of the universities overlook. What's in it for you, the customer, to use this, te this technology? A lot of the learning management systems don't actually start with that thought. They start with how do we corral people onto a platform to get them to do what we want them to do, which is not how the internet works so well. Other alternative ways, what are the technical requirements? Just be conversant and familiar with the skill set required. If you're going to open up a website, it's going to require you to think it through the same way as opening up a store, opening up a cafe, or any other business, do I have the skills to do everything myself? If I'm going to open up a website and something goes wrong, can I fix it? Do I need to bring in someone to fix it for me? If I need to bring in someone to fix it for me, can I find that someone? These are questions you want to have answered before you get started. There's also the technical elements here on what does the site do in terms of delivering the promise. It's a lot of technical component parts in here, but top of the list is if somebody comes to your site, 
because you've told them to go there to perform a task. So you've said to someone, go to the site, buy the book, and they can't buy the book from your site. You've missed a sale and you've annoyed a customer, so you've just missed 10 sales because that annoyed customer is going to tell other people not to waste their time. So play careful. Ensure that when you make a promise, it can be delivered. So talk metrics for a moment. The metrics plan is actually quite short because it's a case of what is my objective? How do I measure it? What instruments am I going to use? What data can I have? What market research would support? What do I need to know in order to answer, did I achieve my objective? Document it, write it down, and then collect that data on the way so you can answer that question. As always, any questions, particularly around metrics and implementation, I'm very, very happy to have people come see me in my office, talk to me at the tutorials and lectures, and talk to me online about making things happen. This is a course about doing stuff. So these plans are all about facilitating your ability to get out there and get stuff done. So feel free to come talk to me and line up meetings and work with me uh, in terms of workshops and you know, mentoring, whatever approach will help you make things happen, make things turn into a reality.